What happened was I started selling carvings. It was the first time in my life that I had sold enough art to actually consider that, wait a minute, I could actually support myself with just selling art. All right, hi everybody, this is Andrew Gable here, back for another video. I'm going to talk about why I'm here on YouTube making videos. What's been your experience? If anybody watching this, you know, as an, as an artist or a creative person, do you think YouTube is a good platform for artists? I started out as a painter and I had a gallery for a little while. I think I sold like one or two pieces. I was quite young, I think I was 24. 26 so I wasn't I, I didn't really have the same mentality around working with a gallery and actually I was I was kind of in the point of thinking money is the root of all evil money and art don't go together I don't need money I'm an artist I can just you know do my art you know what happened was I never kind of embraced the financial side of creating art and I ended up with no money. I ended up not being able to pay my rent. So my big plans to be an artist kind of came crashing down. I had a moment, a few years, where I was reflecting on that whole process and I actually had let go of the idea of being an artist and I really wanted to try and not do art. I ended up in the city where I am now and I was kind of here for totally unrelated reasons. And at that point, I had come to some important realizations about my process as a human being, what my purpose actually as a human being is, which is fascinating because that purpose had to do with art. Meaning, yes, art can be a part of that expression. It wasn't the point, it wasn't the only point. And in fact, I realized that the substance within the art is actually the artist or the substance within the artist is actually the person. It was like I realized the value of myself. Okay, so I ended up coming to the city where I am now. As I was, you know, working in this unrelated industry, I was looking for another job to sort of fill in the gaps. I found this ad actually, and it was for a, a gallery looking for artists to work with the gallery to create stone carvings. I had never done that before, but I spent my, basically my entire life up to that point doing art. And I thought, yeah, I could do that. And I ended up forming a partnership with this gallery and uh, I started creating stone carvings. What happened was I started selling carvings. It was the first time in my life that I had sold enough art to actually consider that, wait a minute, I could actually support myself with just selling art, with just creating and selling art. And so it was an interesting time period for me. So over the last seven years, I began building this business model of working with galleries and selling my stone carvings and original art to be the sole income for myself as an artist. One of the things about creating the art that I wanted to create, like really pushing my limits, pushing my skill level, pushing my ability, it was time consuming. And anyone that creates original art knows that. And there's a relationship between time and money. I continued to carve and carve and carve and carve and create artworks and sell artworks and create artworks and sell artworks. And the growth of the business was so excruciatingly painfully slow that it was a test of patience for sure because on the one hand i had found this way to support myself as an artist except here's the thing i i wasn't i wouldn't say i was thriving as an artist my goals in terms of the return that i wanted for my labor my training my skills my expression as a human being wasn't happening in the way that I, I was wanting. And so I continued to like look for ways to sort of generate enough income so that I could be satisfied and happy as an artist, that I could support myself and my family and that I could support other people and that I could actually grow the business. I could grow at it, I, I could expand it. So I was very much just learning on the fly. Like, how do I even do this? How do I do my taxes? How do I price my work? And for a while I was 
happy and satisfied enough because I was making more money than I'd ever made before. And up until that point, I had never, I hadn't really ever made any money. Like I was a typical starving artist. And I believed that that was a real thing and that artists can't make money and you can't make money with art. I believed this until that one day when I sold a sculpture for five times, six times as much money as I've ever sold a piece of art before and realized, oh, people do spend money on art, okay. But what I wanted to talk about in this video is why I'm here on YouTube. Seven years I worked at that process and last year, from the transition from 2019 to 2020, I had like overhauled my process of creating work. If I can't sell my work for this amount of money, I'm gonna stop, I'm not gonna do it because it's not worth it. And that's the thing, like, I had done it for a while, like seven years, you know, and the growth was slow and I was reaching a point where it was like, what do I want as a human being? Like, if art can't provide me with stability, with happiness, then why am I doing it? I began really like challenging what, I, what I'd done up to that point and like pushing it like, okay, I'm gonna put my art at this price, you know, if it doesn't sell, then I'm not gonna do it because that's the only way for me to kind of grow in the way that I want. And I think I had, I had been patient for seven years because I'd never had experience with how a business is supposed to grow. So I just assumed it takes a long time. And that's what I heard from coming out of people's mouths. Like, you know, it takes a long time for someone to grow a business. It takes years and years and years, especially for artists. And then I'm coming on YouTube and I'm thinking, I'm finding artists that are like, I've been building this business for so long. I've been at it for three and a half years. And you know, I made X, X money this year. And I'm thinking like, what the, what the beep like? So there was a lot of frustration. And, and this is maybe an interesting point. I was, I had so much, I've had so much frustration over the last seven years, but like also so much excitement and fun. And like, it's been so, so interesting to do and to get the opportunity to do art. It was like I was satisfied with the fact that I was just doing art, that I didn't really care that I couldn't necessarily really grow or support myself in the way that I wanted or my family or others or give back to the community. Like I had accepted as form of a, a limitation in terms of, well, I'm at least doing art. And so COVID hit <laughs> and no one went to, was going to galleries and it was like a moment where I, I, I started really thinking, okay, how can I change this? How can I, how can I be more stable as an artist? How can I make money as an artist? What are the other ways artists make money? I started looking more online and started realizing, okay, now I really have to do, I have to change my business model because for the last seven years, I had all my eggs in one basket. So that means I had one income stream. I had never made a living as an artist until I connected with galleries and I sold my work through galleries. And in fact, I saw a lot of artists that were very successful within that framework. I had never made a living as an artist until with until working with galleries. So from that level, it does work. I learned so much. I got to spend time selling my own art in galleries. That was such a cool thing. Like I literally had the opportunity to stand on the gallery floor and sell the art and interact with clients and sell my art and sell other people's art. It is only one way to do it. And so here I am and I'm like, okay, I gotta get online. I knew this. My wife's been telling me to get on YouTube and make videos. 2021 rolls around. I've been putting more time into doing these videos to really, you know, see what the potential is. If I may be so bold, my goal is to be monetized by the end of this year. That's my goal. And I feel like if I give a solid effort by posting weekly for the entire year, I will be able to see if this is a viable option for me. And I do believe that I will be monetized by the end of 2021 if I post one every single week. Is that possible? You know, my passion is not art. My passion is not art. My passion is life. Art has been one way that I've expressed that passion. Since I started making these videos, I get to sit down here and I get to talk to the camera and I get to share and I get to speak and I get to express and I get to share the nuances of who I am and, and why I do the things the way I do, why I create the art the way I do. And so I've been sharing my art process and, and I found it to be so enriching because I'm now 
sharing so much more of myself. And I felt like before the old model, it was like, here's the art and the artist is in the background. And sometimes you don't even ever meet the artist. But the point is, is I'm realizing that there's a lot of value in my, in me right? In my words, in my experience, that has nothing to do with art. Art becomes a vehicle with which I can sort of share myself and express myself. And so I've, I've, I've been really enjoying that dimension of making videos and like seeing, oh crap, I actually really enjoy this. This is super fun. And honestly, making videos is so creative. And you know what? I love making thumbnails. Like thumbnails is like making a piece of art. And I've studied making art I've studied composition. I've studied how to get the viewer to feel something when they look at your art. What are they thinking? Like, how do you, how do you communicate with the person that's looking at your art? And so thumbnails is like, okay, how do I get the person to click on the thumbnail? Like, how do I be honest? How do I have integrity with this? Still get attention, still make it interesting. So the thumbnails I find sometimes I spend more time on the thumbnail than I do the art that I'm displaying in the video. Not to mention the video, which is a whole creative process in itself. As an artist, I find the whole process of being an artist on YouTube to be very creative. And so far the platform has proven to nurture the creative process and bring out other aspects and dimensions of my creativity and best of all, of me. I am here, I am visible, I am here talking to you and you know, that was something that was kind of missing in the old model, the old way. I felt very isolated. And honestly, I mean, I can't shake your hand. Like, the, there's a camera here, there's a screen here. So, you know, it's not perfect, but it, it is interesting and it is enjoyable. So that's my story of why I'm on YouTube, why I have been putting more time, investing more time and energy and attention into building this creative expression and exploring how to make YouTube a substantial or meaningful part, aspect, dimension of my art business model. So it's not just, I make a piece of art, I sell it in the gallery. It's now, well, what is, what's the potential of YouTube? What kind of connections can I make? You know, how else do artists make money in this world? So like ad revenue or sponsorships or um, affiliate marketing. What's been your experience? If anybody watching this, you know, as an as an artist or a creative person, do you think YouTube is a good platform for artists and why? Is it maybe good for some, you know, a very few that kind of have a big channel and can grow or like what are the pros and cons? And that's another thing about making these videos is I, I feel like I'm able to share a little bit more about my perspective and my view as a human being and you know, why I, why I decided to go into art and why I was determined to be an artist in this world because, you know, as a 14 year old looking around and like seeing all these miserable adults working in the world, I'm like, uh, I can go to art school. I can go and do art for a living. Oh, okay. And I'm like, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> like, this is a total loophole in the system. So I'm gonna go to school, I'm gonna put in, the effort and I did and I really I really dug in. And then I got out of school and I was like, okay, right, the government wouldn't have given me this money if there were no jobs for me. Okay, how do I do it? Just <laughs> crash, so anyways, but I did get the degree, I did learn a lot. I used to think that for artists to like really be successful, you have to have good art. Now, but I, what I really think is you just have to find a way to do it. The, the art that is good is the art that is visible, the art that people are seeing because the artist was determined and found some way to continue to do it. So that's all I do. I don't even care if my art's good. I just want to keep finding ways to, to keep doing art. <laughs> I mean, obviously I care if my art's good. Like the challenge is like, just figure out a way to do it. Like you don't necessarily have to worry so much if it's good or bad. You want it to be good. You want to keep challenging yourself and building your skill. But really for me, it's like, okay, well, let me just figure out how to keep doing it. How do I, how do I support myself with this? So that's what I'm doing here on YouTube. Okay, thanks everybody for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I rambled on a lot, but it's my video. All right, thanks everybody.